Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online series 7 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. In yesterday's episode, we featured a really interesting team with buying Dusclops, so if you have not seen yesterday's episode, I'd highly recommend it, and let's get started with today's episode. We have a Arctivish in team preview. That is super, super interesting. Um, so... By the way, this team was built by Nick Navare, who also goes by Nails, and you can see a really detailed uh, team report uh, down in the description below. It's featured on uh, another player's YouTube channel. He goes by Audi, uh, and it's a really, really insightful team report, so please go check that out as well if you want more insight into how to play with this team. Uh, okay. Arctivish? Slush Rush? Honestly, I have like not gone up against this Pokemon in so long. Uh... <laughs> I really don't know what to expect. Huh. Okay, we're definitely not bringing Landorus here. I, I think Torkoal needs to come out, given the matchup. What I what am I nervous about? I guess Spectrier? Grimmsnarl, Venusaur. Like, the classic Grimmsnarl, Venusaur, Dusclops seems okay here. Glastrier is pretty good in the back, but so is Torkoal in this one, I think. I'm gonna try uh, the the standard three, and then with the Torkoal over the uh, the Glastrier. So I'm really excited to see how this matchup plays out. But thanks as always for watching Road to Rank. If you enjoyed, please show your support by leaving a like in the video. I really appreciate it. And question of the day, I want to know if you can create a new move in Pokemon, what would it be? Let me know in the comments below. And seriously appreciate everyone's support. We are almost, you know, finishing up the year and it's been really fun to continue making Road to Rank for you all. So appreciate everyone for continuing to come out and watch the videos. Okay, Hitmontop and Spectrier. Um... What does my opponent go for here? Just a fake out and a sleep powder? Or, sorry, I want a sleep powder. They're probably just going to fake out Grimmsnarl and Phantasm. Ooh, I don't have a ghost switch in. I probably just max Venusaur, but the question is whether or not I max Quake to get a special defense boost. That could be kind of cool. Uh, it's definitely light screen here. Question is basically how much Phanta like two Phantasms do. Um, yeah, okay, I'm leaning towards Light Screen, Max, and just Vine Lash into Spectrier. That seems okay. Spectrier probably maxes here. That's my expectation, yeah. Spectrier is a Pokemon that's really uh, seen a lot more usage recently. I think people realize that it can just be a really strong Dynamax option. So we've used Spectrier a bunch on the channel already, as you've seen previously. But combination of... I mean, Max Phantasm alone can just really sweep through teams, so it's like, even though Spectre doesn't have as much coverage as, say, Glastrier does, it doesn't matter because Ghost is already good enough. And then you can run Max Quake uh, and Max Strike as well, so turns it into a pretty powerful beast. I don't know, Max Quaking onto turn one might have been better, just because I don't need that residual damage to add up immediately. Um, but Spectre is a pretty big problem here, honestly. See if they go for fake out turn one. Yeah. So that's not ideal, but that was expected. The upside is we can light screen next turn, right? And they actually have for max strike. Okay. On to Venusaur. Okay, I don't mind that. I mean, you end up doing less damage than you would have with the Phantasm. And the speed drop doesn't really make a difference, to be honest, because I'm already slower than you. So, I'm actually okay with that. Uh, because I can just light screen this next turn. I just wonder if Quake into Vine Lash would have been a KO, but it doesn't look like that was the case. Another Vine Lash will KO the Spectre, though, which is nice. Um, but I'm worried about helping Hand from Hitmontop this next turn. So, I think what I'm going to go for is... Oh, I actually have a bunch of options. Uh, I was going to say, I could just go for a Spirit Break onto Spectre, but I think I'm down to Light Screen and Protect this turn. I think my opponent's max is way more important than my max in this game. Because... Their team is a lot more offensive, so if I stall out the max, I think, like, it puts the Dusclops in a really winning position. And they go for Quick Guard, okay. That's a real throwback to Hitmontops from back in the day. Yeah, like, you'd see Quick Guard a lot uh, a few years ago, and Wide Guard. Yeah, and they Phantasm to Venusaur, okay, perfect. So, like, I think this trade is totally worth it, because my opponent, basically, if you're using Spectre, you really need to get the most out of your couple of turns here. Uh, and I, I think that we basically have an advantage in the position we're at right now. So we already got light screen up, now I can reflect as well. Um, and what's likely to be in the back? The hail stuff, Heatran, Rillaboom. Either way, I think Dusclops Torkoal look pretty good for us in this end game. So I don't mind going for a reflect. Yeah, just so I take less damage from a potential close combat. 
And um, Quaking here is interesting, because I think after the Vine Lash damage and Life Orb Spectre should faint. So I'll go for an increased uh, stage of special defense here. Oh, they have Sucker Punch. That's interesting. I didn't think they'd have Sucker Punch, to be honest, given that they had the Quick Guard. So Sucker Punch, uh, I'm sure you Phantasm here. I don't know why they went for Max Strike turn one on us, to be honest. Yeah, Venusaur survives after the special defense. That is so good. Nice. So him on top has Fake Out, uh, Quick Guard, Sucker Punch, and presumably Close Combat, I would think, as it's fourth. I, I just wanted the special defense boost here on Grimstar because I think that could be valuable. Yeah, I don't really need a special attack boost on it, and yeah, Spectre faints there anyway. Plus, the Quake covers a potential switch into Heatran, although I don't think Spectre ever switches out on its last turn of Dynamax there. Okay, so I think this is honestly a great start to the game, because if you look at my opponent's team, their best answer to Dusclops was that Spectre. So, trading Venusaur for Spectre is totally worth it, especially because I still have one more turn of the Vine Lash damage as well. But... That's why it might have been worth it to have started with Max Quake, uh, and then ended with the Vine Lash damage. Okay, Heatran comes out. That's fine. Um, with Heatran coming out, though, honestly, it might be worth it to conserve the Venusaur here. So, for example, I can switch Venusaur out, go into Dusclops. Um, I'm just curious if it's substitute Heatran. That's the one thing I'm, like, slightly nervous for. But otherwise, it's not that much of a problem, especially with screens being up. Yeah, I'm going to Spirit Break into Heatran here and just switch out into Dusclops right now. Uh, if Heatran does not have Substitute, then it should be really easy to deal with. Uh, we'll want to KO the Hitmon on top so we can just Earth Power the Heatran, but I want to lower Heatran's Special Attack further because at this point Heatran... I'm oh, sorry, Dusclops is looking really good. Okay, they go for Sucker Punch, yep. Could I have actually gone for Sleep Powder there? That might have been better, I don't know. Is that a crit? Yeah, I was going to say, no way you knock us out otherwise. Ah, that's... Makes this a little bit tougher, I think. Well, that's not ideal. Um, okay. Yeah, I think if we survive there, we're in such good shape. Because then I, like, Grimstorm just sticks around for another turn. Um, I mean, I think it's still okay, but it makes it a little bit tougher. I'm going to go into Torkoal right now. He trying to have Flash Cannon. Presumably Heat Wave, uh, Earth Power Protected. I really don't think it has sub. Otherwise, like, I think last turn was a perfect time to go for a substitute, right? I can Trick Room now, though, right? Yeah, my opponent does not have very good anti-trick room stuff, so I think protect trick room here is fine. I just want to avoid an earth power right now from the Hitmon top. Or sorry, from the Heatran. <laughs> not Hitmon top. Uh, and, and that's the downside of using a team like this, right? When you are often playing more defensively than offensively, it opens yourself up to more crits. And so, because games with this team typically last longer as well, like, you know, it's gonna happen. Uh just because, yeah, games, uh, like, the turns really drag on. Um, so, can't really complain about something like that. It is a little bit unfortunate, but I still feel like we're in a pretty good spot right now. Okay, they just went Heat Wave Close Combat. I wonder if you don't have Earth Power, then, if you're going for something like that. I don't know. Okay, so we get the Trick Room up. Um, I'd love to go for a Bind here, honestly. I wonder if Body Press is enough to KO the hit on top. It really should be, I would think. Same on top even that's scary. Why don't I just double up on a Heatran? Like, I would think Body Press Nightshade actually just KOs Heatran here. Let's find out. The Storkle's max defense, so it is pretty big monster damage-wise. Him on top's not really a concern in this end game. Okay, they just go for Sucker Punch. Yeah, that does so little damage. Nice. So, I don't really need to care about him on top in this position right now. Heatran might survive this. It's pretty bulky. We know the berry, though. It's Shucka Berry. Yeah, it does survive, but honestly, that's fine. Yeah, it does have Earth Power. Okay, so I guess it was reading into the Protect last turn. We should survive this. Oh, yeah. Light Screen is just so good here. Nice. One of the other cool things with this team, by the way, is the ability to, like, self-heal uh, with Pain Split. Like, targeting ourselves with Pain Split. It's definitely something to consider later on. Um, I'm just going to Body Press him on top here and Nightshade into Heatran. I don't even care if you Sucker Punch Dust Clubs, because I can just Pain Split all the damage off later on. He Trump Protects, which is kind of expected here, but you can see how difficult it is for my opponent to do damage now that we got the screens up. Uh, looks like they're going to try to close combat here, but that's fine. I think Body Press might just KO, but even if not, like, I don't feel that bad. <laughs> I think it's all with 1 HP. <laughs> nice. But you can see how hard it is to knock out this Torkoal right now, right? Uh, and with Spectre gone once again, like, Dust Clubs becomes the win condition in this late game. 
So let's see what possible switch ins my opponent can have. Who would you switch here? Probably hit him on top to reset a fake out. We have two turns of trick room left. Um. Yeah, I'm down to Burning Jealousy here and Nightshade. It just covers the switch a little bit better. Especially if you go into, I mean, anything in the back, right? There's two ice types. Yeah, they just actually end up forfeiting. Nice. So we didn't even need to use Bind in this game. I, I think this is a good game of how uh, you can often beat like hyper-offensive teams if you are able to stall out their Dynamax effectively. I, I don't know why my opponent went for Max Strike turn 1, honestly, with the... Uh, with the Spectre. I feel like they could have just gone for a Phantasm. I don't know if that really would have made too much of a difference, but Strike does more damage than, or sorry, Phantasm does more damage than Strike in that position. Uh, and then it would have made Venusaur hanging on for as long as it did a little bit tougher. But I felt really good about that match as soon as my opponent targeted Venusaur into the max guard, honestly. Uh, and the main problem is that once screens were up, my opponent just didn't have much damage, right? So I, like, I, I think often if you get screens up and you have Dusclops in the back with all the turns of screens, like it's often such a good position, especially if you can stall out the opposing Dynamax. So yeah, pretty happy about how that played out overall. I don't think I would have really changed the Pokemon choice. I would have liked to see the hail combination come out from my opponent's end, but totally understandable why they didn't bring that. Okay, so this is, you know, pretty align, in line with a lot of the hyper offensive teams we've seen recently. Um... Dragapult's the main threat here, but Urshifu being able to crit through everything I think is actually also kind of tough for this team just because, you know, uh, you just ignore, you know, all these boosts uh, and you can't really drop Urshifu's attack. Um, I think Clef plus Dragapult's a really scary lead here. I guess to which I could just leave Grimmsnarl and Venusaur again. I mean, does the classic work here? Grimstar and Venusaur does Club's Clash Trainer? See, the thing is, Torkoal's maybe a little bit more valuable for that Cartana. But is Cartana really that much of a threat? So you can't do much damage to Dusclops. Clash Trainer feels like slightly better under Trick Room because it can sweep through most of my opponents. Ah, but Torkoal's so defensive, actually. It gives me a better answer against the uh, Urshifu. Yeah, I think I will go for the Torkoal instead, actually. Just because I think one... Uh, I, I, like, I actually predict my opponent to just not bring Karton into this matchup, but if they do and I don't bring Torkoal, it gets a little bit harder. So Torkoal gives me a better answer against that. And then the second upside is, like I mentioned, I think Urshifu is very scary in the late game, but Torkoal gives me a slightly better answer against it. Okay, it's going to be Dragapult Regieleki. I don't mind that very much. I think what I can do here is just go for a Reflect. Uh, I would guess that Dusclops, or sorry, Dragapult goes for a max airstream onto Venusaur. So just launch a Reflect off and probably just Vine Lash here. The question is whether or not there actually is a Cartana in the back, because if so, you could Volt Switch into Cartana right now. Um, yeah. But I, I just like getting the Vine Lash damage off immediately. It just like that residual adds up so quickly against the non-Dynamax Pokemon here. Although I guess if you go into Cartana, then it's kind of wasted. Because Cartana doesn't take the residual, and then only Dragapult takes a little bit. Uh, obviously significantly less because it's Dynamaxed. Maybe Torkoal could have been interesting to bring in the back, but the thing is if Dragapult is Airstream, and Regilecki is Electroweb, like you can actually just kind of ignore the boosts anyway, so I don't think it makes that much of a difference. The only downside is right now Glastra looks a lot better than uh, Torkoal against these two Pokemon specifically. Uh, like, my end game against the Dragapult is not exactly super clear right now. So, yeah. I, I think there were a lot of upsides and downsides to both Dusclops and... Or, sorry, Glastra and the, um... Uh, and the Torkoal here. But I'll at least get the first screens up, and hopefully we can get both up. We'll have to see what my opponent goes for here. Okay, T-Bolt into Venusaur. That's definitely Specs. So much damage. Oh, actually, that was a crit. But I think that was crit plus Specs. Which isn't ideal. Uh, it's definitely not ideal. But we take the Phantasm decently well. Yeah, I think that crit actually makes a big difference. Because I think we would have survived the Phantasm uh, anyway. If my opponent didn't get that. But now we might just get KO'd. Which is pretty bad. Um, I get rid of Regieleki in one shot. Which is good. I have Reflect up. And the thing is, once Dynamax is over, Dragapult is not really that big of a threat to Dusclops, right? So, uh, it, it's basically a question of, once again, can we stall out the early Dynamax? Uh, and, and once again, I think this is 
we've gotten crit the last two games, right? And sure, maybe that seems unlucky, but that's just kind of how sometimes it works, right? If you're going after your opponent, like, it's just more likely for them to crit you, basically. Uh, because they're attacking first, uh, and you're going to basically see more attacks from them than you are going to uh, against them if because they can KO you first. Okay, that logic was not very good. I'll, I'll try to <laughs> emphasize that point a little bit better in a bit. Um, I can just go on a Detorkle here, actually, because that does give me a speed boost immediately. But I kind of want to max guard this turn and then go into Torkoal the last turn, I think. So, like, I'm down to... Okay, we know that's not weakness policy. I could see my opponent going for, like, a helping hand attack on a Grimmsnarl, but I doubt you have Steel Spike here, so we'll probably survive the turn. Um, honestly, I'm down to just Spirit Break here for a little bit of chip and max guard. I, I think, like, so few people just respect max guard on Venusaur, and so they always try to just force it and knock out onto it immediately. Follow me. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, and, they, and then I think next turn we go Grimmsnarl out into Torkoal and then Ooze into Clefairy. Okay, they read into that. It's a good read. But, I, like, I, I don't mind. Like, Grimmsnarl doesn't... Actually, I was going to say it doesn't take much damage. That was a decent amount of damage, but I think it's still fine. Um, oh, but now the problem is, do I outspeed Dragapult after it gets the speed boost off? I'm not sure the answer to that is yes, actually. That could be a problem. That very well could be a problem. Pretty good damage on Spirit Break there, actually. <laughs> a lot more than I expected. Okay, so more residual comes out. My opponent only has one uh, one more turn of Dynamax here, which is good. You should Phantasm into Venusaur. That's always the safest play. I'm pretty sure Dragapult outspeeds us now. It reaches, what, 2, like, 13? Yeah. Yeah, so no, no, it should definitely outspeed us. Unless you're, like, not max speed at all for some reason. Um... Okay, I don't even want to switch out into Torkoal then, because I think Torkoal is actually a pretty good late game win con here as well, so... I'm gonna just Spirit Break into Clefairy, honestly. Uh, actually, should I get Light Screen up here? Because I didn't set it up last turn. Feeny might be in the back, and it could be valuable against that. Yeah, I'd rather Light Screen right now. And, uh... I uh, should have attacked with Venusaur there, I guess. I, I should have probably just switched out last turn, just to guarantee that I outspeed. Okay, Clefairy goes for Follow Me, that's fine. I'm sure you knock out Venusaur here, but now my opponent doesn't have Dynamax to play with anymore. What's Dragapult going to do after Dynamax is over? Not nearly as much damage. Yep, they correctly go for Phantasm on Venusaur. No reason to airstream there. Phantasm covers my entire team, especially with Grimmsnarl being out. So It may have been better to switch into Torkoal and gone for Ooze last turn, but I totally foresaw a world in which Clefairy protected there, uh, and then you just knock out Venusaur. And my opponent there did respect the Max Guard play, so props to them. Uh, it would have been really good, though, had I just switched into Torkoal and Oost, I think, and it put us in a really, really commanding position. But honestly, I still feel okay about the spot that we're in right now, so it's fine. I'm just going to go into Dust Clubs immediately. Um, I guess the one thing to note about my late-game damage output is I don't do very much into a Dragapult at all. But I have Reflect Up. Uh, Dragapult. Okay, we know the items here, so Frisk doesn't really do much, but that's fine. The main thing is stalling out the Dynamax, right? Uh, I think I will just try to set up a Trick Room right now. And there's still one more turn of Vine Lash, which is good. I have Light Screen up as well, so... Yeah, I'm just going to Spirit Break here into the Clefairy and set up Trick Room right now. Because Dragapult after Dynamax in Trick Room doesn't do very much. Good Protect on Clefairies, and I wonder if it's a Phantom Force here. It is, okay. That's fine. Uh, we've only seen Follow Me, Protect, normally Helping Hand and Dazzle or Moonblaster here last two. Okay, so we got Trick Room up. Um, I have Reflect up still, so I'm not really worried about the damage I'm taking here. I wonder if Nightshade is just a KO onto Clefairy there. Looks pretty close. You can see how this Vine Lash damage adds up, by the way, which is really nice. Um, is there value into switching Grimmsnarl out? Because it's not going to... Well, actually, it's pretty good against anything my opponent could have in the back, now that I think about it. But don't want to get hit by a Fairy-type attack. I'm down to go into Torkoal here. And just Nightshade. Yeah, because I can just Pain Split off the damage. Like, the Dust Club should definitely survive. Oh, I guess you get Helping Hand. But with Reflect Up, I think we should be good anyway. Well, I should have considered Helping Hand more, though. I think the better play was to switch Dust Clubs out there, because I don't know how much it does here to us. Yeah. That was... I'm not sure if my play here was the best. Okay. Clef should go down, but if Dust Clubs faint, like, I feel like we had a pretty guaranteed win here with late game Dust Clubs, but my opponent is going to be able to get this, like, one really big attack off against it. Okay, never mind. Dust Clubs is just too good. 
yeah, we survived that with a comfortable amount. So, we still have a couple turns of Trick Room. We get Torkoal in for free. Urshifu is the last one. That is totally okay with me. Um, yeah, Dragapult's not a problem right now at all. So, I'm just going to Body Press into Urshifu and uh, Pain Split here. Yeah, I think that's super safe. Oh, actually, I should have double-checked the speeds. I forgot if uh, the Torkoal is faster than the Dusclops. Yeah, they just protect anyway. Okay. Hmm. Okay, yeah, Dusclops is faster. That's good. Yeah, I don't think my opponent really has an out here then. I wonder if you just Phantom Force. I wonder if you go for a double protect. Yeah, they go for another Phantom Force. <laughs> um. Okay. If they get a double protect off, do I lose? No, I think we're honestly still in a fine position. I can even self-pain split right now, actually. I think you have to go for a double protect here, actually. And try to KO Dusclops. Like, I just switched Dusclops into Grimmsnarl right now. Um, I feel like that's our best I just, I just think Arashifu really has to protect here. Right, I'm gonna go out on a Grim Snarl. I also just think my opponent can't really do damage into Torkoal right now, so that's why I'm not that concerned. Good play last turn, though. Wonder if it would have been better just to have gone- I don't know. Burning Jealousy doesn't do much into Dragon Pulp there. Oh, they actually don't go for a double. Interesting. Okay. But I actually don't think Nightshade would have- oh, no. Pain Split would have done enough initially. Okay, they are gonna Wicked Blow. Yeah, Torkoal's just so tanky here. We still have our Citrus Berry intact, too, which is good. Oh, they actually doubled up on a Torkoal. Interesting. Okay, well, it should be a, what, a double protect now? Yeah. Nice plays by my opponent. It's kind of inexcusable if we lose this, to be honest. Um, I'm just going to body press and spare break, but I think it should be just a double attack from my opponent's end right now. Okay, Urshifu protects. Maybe Dragapult doesn't actually have protect. I could see Dragon Dance being the last attack. Okay, they do have protect, so good to confirm that. This entire time I was wondering whether or not it had it. Yeah, I don't know. Did I read too much into the double protect play? If my opponent gets it, then I just double up on Urshifu the next turn. I think probably sub I play this slightly suboptimally. Um, but you can't pick up a knockout onto both of my Pokemon right now. Yeah, so I just go for the knockout onto Urshifu this turn, I think. I'm just going to body press and spirit break. This was not the cleanest end game for sure. I definitely could have played this a little bit better, but I think we're still fine. Okay, they Phantom Force. Yeah, that's fine. And Wicked Blow. Yeah, I, I think we have the game one here because I, I have three attacks I can just knock out, and that doesn't even KO Torkoal, yeah. So we should be good here, but I, I do feel like I could have played this end game a little bit cleaner. Like, as soon as... Clefairy went down. I feel like this was pretty much a wrap, and I got Trick Room up. So my opponent played well to like kind of claw themselves back into it. But to be honest, I guess like this was the worst case scenario, and even in the worst case scenario, we still pretty much had it wrapped up, right? What if my opponent crit Phantom Force onto Torkoal though? That may have been bad. Um. Yeah, I don't even think you KO the Grim Snarl here. I'm gonna just yawn, Dragapult, and uh, reflect here. Well, does Grimstone survive? I guess I don't know. <laughs> I think it's always safer to reflect here anyway. But Spirit Break would just ensure the game, I guess, if I just went for it. But no reason not to reflect this turn. This ensures that we survive now against the Dragapult. We've seen Dragapult's moveset. Oh, they target Torkoal anyway. Okay. Yeah, so now it's now it's over. So... Yeah, I, I mean, like I said, I don't think this endgame was, like, the cleanest on my end, but at the end of the day, like, I wasn't that worried about Dragapult either way, so, yeah, I never felt like we were honestly in immediate danger. So, now we can just go for a... Uh, do I want to trick... Yeah, it's best to trick room here. I mean, the Dragapult literally cannot do enough damage to everything to win this game, so it's pretty much wrapped. But I'm going to trick room here. I think Dragapult probably Phantom Forces, yeah. So, like... Now, I guess, eh, my opponent could actually win off a triple protect. Because I'm sure you're going into dust clubs here. Uh, but what was I worried about? 
Actually, Dragapult can't do damage in a Grim Snarl, so it doesn't matter if they get a triple protect, actually. <laughs> they also just faint from their life lord damage beforehand anyway. But I, I can respect my opponent for fighting this one till the very end. Like I think they played really well uh, after the early game. And even played well in the early game. But I think we just have a really good team matchup here. Like this team loves going up against hyper offensive stuff if you can weather the storm in the first couple turns. So yeah. You can go for a triple protect. Even if you get it though, Dragapult I don't think can knock down Grimmsnarl, and then Grimmsnarl should survive a fly, Phantom Force, or whatever dragon type of attack you have. So yeah. Like I said, not the cleanest end game here, but uh like the reason I played the way I did was because I want to cover for all my options. And I think if that Urshifu does go for a double protect and gets it, this game gets a lot uglier. Especially if you are targeting the Dusclop slot. Maybe it's not that bad, though. I don't know. Then what happens? I just bring in uh, my uh, my Grim Snarl, And then I can just knock out the, the Urshifu slot the next turn. I think it was fine to cover for a double protect option, because I honestly thought that was my opponent's best play. So, I don't know if they one up me and they just like read into me expecting them to go for the uh, double. But if so, well done. That's a slur puff. Wow, okay. Well, Zapdos, Metagross, Lele, that's a real throwback to VGC 18 right now. Um, so Slurpuff Lele is probably the thing I'm most worried about here, actually. And it's actually a pretty big problem. Um, man, I kind of want to lead Landers here. Because Slurpuff Lele kind of eats Grimmsnarl Venusaur up. And it's, that's not good. Um... The problem with Landers here is that I think Porygon is really tough. I could also just try to Dynamax Clash Drear under Trick Room. Yeah. That's not a terrible option, actually. But if I'm trying to die, go with Dusclops, what would I lead? Grimmsnarl Dusclops, and then Torkoal Glass Drear. But, like, you could just taunt me is the problem here, right? That's what I'm worried about. If you're my opponent, you have to cover for the Torkoal Venusaur lead, just because that's always, like, the most threatening thing uh, combination on this team. I honestly expect Lele Slurpuff. Maybe it's Landorus Dustpops then. Yeah, Grimstorm doesn't feel that good here. Cause, just because it's so weak to Tapu Lele and the Slurpuff. Alright, let's see. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm still thinking about that last game. Should I have, should I have just doubled up on Tarashifu? I don't know. I mean, like I said, the worst case pretty much happened. Like, my opponent played perfectly, and even with per playing perfectly in that endgame, we still had it wrapped up, which makes me feel like I, like what we did there was fine, but I don't know. Okay, it's going to be a Lele Slurpuff, like I said. That was expected. Huh. You know what I want to do? I think I bind here. Um, who would I bind? Who maxes here as well? Actually, maybe I should have had Grimmsnarl on the back just as a switch in. Ooh, your specs. That's actually really good to know because that means Lele is not maxing. Is definitely not maxing. Oh, are you fake tears? I think it's going to be fake tears. Oh, that's actually a really big problem. You could just fake tier Psychic Dusclops right now. That's a big problem. I think I have to read into that, actually. I'm going to Dynamax. I'm just going to Quake into the Lele and then switch Dusclops out into... I guess I'd rather give up Torkoal here. Oh, shoot. How would I have beaten this lead otherwise? I guess Venusaur Torkoal could have worked, because I could just max Venusaur in front of this. Wait, does Slurpuff have after you, though? It does, right? I actually don't remember. We used Slurpuff like months ago. Um, I'm actually double checking its moveset right now because I don't know. It's a really interesting Pokemon. Uh, I haven't seen Lele much either here, so it's neat to see that combination. Yeah, it does have after you. Okay. Glad to know that I remember that correctly. So then the problem if I lead Torkoal Venusaur is you can just after you target Venusaur and Venusaur gets dunked on turn one, which isn't good. Yeah, there's fake tears. Yep. Okay, good. It feels so bad sacrificing a Pokemon like that, but I think I had to go for that. 
This is this is why, I sh like I said, though, I should have brought Grim Snarl. If I had Grim Snarl in the back here, I could have switched in turn one, taken no damage, gotten a special defense boost on it, and gotten a KO on the opposing end. And then I can just set up screens the subsequent turn with the Grim Snarl. That didn't KO? Oh no. How bulky is that? How do you survive that? What? Oh, brother. Uh, that's really bad. <laughs> I can't believe it survived. Wow. Like that, I, I thought it was a focus ash, but I was like, we obviously knew it was specs. Um, oh, that's not ideal. That is definitely not ideal. I mean, the safe play here is to protect Glastria, right? But I think protect Glastria is so obvious. The question is, am I far behind enough in this game that I have to make a big play? Uh, honestly, the answer kind of feels like yes right now. So I kind of want to just go for a double knockout immediately. Actually, I don't even know if I KO with Quake onto the Slurp Puff. Actually, if I Rock Fall, Lele goes... Yeah, I can double up here. I'm going to make the read my opponent tries to protect... Uh, reads into me protecting Glastria. Yeah, okay. Oh, they, they didn't fake tears, which is the main thing here. Oh, I guess maybe we still get one shot anyway? Okay, we don't get one shot. But we get Yawn, and that's not good either. I think, yeah, this is probably a loss at this point, especially with Yawn coming out as well. Oh, that is so bulky. I don't even think I KO here. Lele hanging on after turn one was a disaster, though. I really didn't think he'd survive a Max Quake there. I'm kind of shocked, to be honest. Okay, let's see if Icicle Crash does enough damage to finish it off here. Nice, okay. I still think we lose, though. Um, yeah, I just don't have enough damage in this endgame, and I don't have screens up to protect the Grim Snarl either. Wow. I, I want to do that Calc on Lele after this game, because I, I really did not think it would survive there. That's cool, though. Serpo of Lele was really good here. Uh, I was not prepared for it. Um, ah, it's so tough to bring Grim Snarl into that kind of matchup. And I should have seen Fake Tears coming, too. That was my bad. Okay, it's Porygon 2 and Metagross. Hmm, that actually is kind of interesting. I can win if I just knock out Porygon here, right? But if you're my opponent, what do you do? You just Dynamax Metagross, you Steel Spike into Glastrier, and I don't know, Ice Beam? I could also win off my opponent messing up and like protecting Metagross here, but I, I suspect your weakness policy... Does that mean I have to go for a crit? I don't even know if crit max quick KOs. Should I switch out into Dust Pops here? I honestly think the most realistic shot of us winning is Metagross actually protecting here, and I just double up onto Porygon for a KO, and like my opponent throws it there. But I, I if you're my opponent, I think you pretty much have this locked up if you Dynamax Steel Spike the, the Glastra here. Yeah. I just can't believe Lele Le hung on. Because if Lele goes down turn one, you don't get a really powerful attack onto Glastrier turn two. Unless you bring a Metagross. If you bring a Metagross, you risk getting hit by a Max Quake. Yeah, no Max Guard. Good play. Unless they Steel Spike Landorus now for some reason. But like I said, I think you have this wrapped if you just Steel Spike uh, Metagross. Or uh, Spike Glastrier. <laughs> just mixing up all my Pokemon names here. This bike comes out. Yeah, well played. Well played. Okay, this game's pretty much over. I am really curious about that Calc onto Lele, because I, I really did not think there was a chance it would survive that. Lele's defense is just not that amazing. Dynamax, Max Quake. So if you're max HP zero defense, Max Quake does 95 to 112%. I guess. It could be max HP, max defense. It's, that's just so unlikely, though. Lele really likes special attack investment. So, yeah. That is super interesting. It had to have been such a bulky top of Lele there. And it was weakness policy here in the end. Um, Is there any way in which we win this? Like, we do have Bind Dusclops, but... Nah, it's, I don't think it's worth playing out. Well, I'll, I'll try. I'll try for another turn or two at least. I guess. Um, yeah. Let me bind on to. Bind just doesn't do anything to Metagross right now. 
I guess I can bind Porygon. I'm not going to give up, actually, especially because if there's, like, a world in which Porygon doesn't have recover for some reason, we could actually win this, like, because my opponent just lacks damage output into Dusk Ops right now. I was initially thinking of just forfeiting so we could play another game, but uh, there is a small chance in which we win this. I just can't foresee, like, Porygon without recover just feels like a throw. You should definitely run recover on that Pokemon always. Ooh, foul play. That's cool. That is cool. Okay. <laughs> and it gets chilling nay. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Well, if you have foul play, maybe there's a small world in which you don't have recover. Uh, so I guess I play towards that. The thing is, Metagross does not have infinite recovery, right? That may work in our favor here. Okay. Um, they have one more turn of max. Maybe it was... No, if I Quake Metagross, though, it gets a policy boost, and then we just instantly lose. All right. Uh, I'm gonna just Trick Room here. Yeah, I actually think uh, Dusclops can 2v1 here, because my opponent does not have super effective damage into it. I guess they have foul play, though, but yeah, it's not like Dusclops' attack is that high anyway. So, let's see. Let us see. Foul play is a pretty interesting tech. I like that a lot, actually, just because... It's not relying on Porygon at all. Uh, ooh, they actually have Mindstorm. Most Metagrosses don't run it nowadays. Oh, that actually did a lot more than I expected. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Wait, that was so sick. <laughs> and it did more because I forgot the Psyche Train was already up as well. That was a really cool team. Props to my opponent. Like, that was really neat. Uh, we can win off a lot of misses now, maybe? And that's why you have foul play, to tar target yourself to activate weakness policy. Ah, uh, that's so cool. But if my opponent actually doesn't have recover here on Porygon, like Terrain just disappeared and Dynamax ended, it's not looking great right now. It's definitely not looking great, but uh, it's not over until it's over. Yeah, I'm gonna just Pain Split here. Also, if you're running a Psychic type attack, that's typically Zen Headbutt. Oh, I guess you just go for your Steel type attack here, like Iron Head or Meteor Mash over Zen Headbutt. Like, I'll probably just faint to a double up right now, but let's see. And they do it for cover, so yeah, we were done for. But we're, we're trying to play for it. It's like, obviously my opponent will likely have it, but until I actually see it, I'm going to play towards my outs. Yeah. They did go for Zen Hellbutt there, right? So it's like, if they missed, maybe there was a shot. Um... Yeah, I mean, the main thing here was just the Tapu Lele surviving a Max Quake from Land Dynamax Landorus. That's still kind of shocking to me, honestly. I guess we're not Max Attack. Actually, that, that probably contributes some of it. Um, hold on. So, actually, the Calc becomes then... Oh, wait, this really doesn't have much attack investment. It's very bulky. That might be it. Okay, let's say you are you have no bulk. And you are modest. <laughs> so my guess is that that Tapu Lele is no bulk because you're specs, so typically you run max speed, max special attack. So because this Landers is a max attack, it actually only has 40 EVs in it. Uh, max Quake does 99.3 to 118%. <laughs> so one hit KOs 94% of the time. That's slightly unfortunate, um, but it is what it is. Yeah. I mean, my opponent played really well. I kind of walked into Slurpuff Lele as a lead. I kind of forgot about the fake tier stuff on turn one. So I, if I'm to lead differently against my opponent, what would I even do there? Uh, I guess v No, this Venusaur is not that speedy, though, and Slurpuff's probably max speed, so it probably outspeeds it. I felt like Dynamax Landers was fine. I just, yeah. This is a really unfortunate roll. Even if we pick up that knockout, though, I can't say we're in that good of a position. Like, this is, like, where I was saying if I actually had Grimmsnarl in the back, I could turn one, switch out, bring in Grimmsnarl, turn two, light screen. But then Metagross is still kind of a problem in this late game. I guess if I have Torkoal, though, Torkoal can manage the Porygon and Metagross combination a little bit better. But I feel like my opponent played that really well. Plus, they had a really cool team that was actually pretty tough to deal with. So even if I played perfectly, like, I don't know how I like my chances too much there. Uh, so, yeah, that was a really interesting game for sure, and a really interesting team, and, uh, it's cool to see Slurpuff Lele, I mean, I think that just puts on a lot of pressure in the early game, and Fake Tears and Yawn, like, Slurpuff provides really, really good support, so, um, I should have just remembered Fake Tears, I even, we even used Slurpuff on this channel a couple months ago, but honestly, just didn't consider that as a possibility, 
So, yeah, I think bringing Grimmsnarl over something may have been better. Am I, if I, am I ever getting Trick Room up there? Like, I, maybe bringing Dusclops was a mistake. Maybe I just don't bring that. And I, like, I can even lead Grimmsnarl Landers turn one and, like, Light Screen and Quake. It's just missing out the knockout there. That's so bad. I, I guess I could have also protected Glastrier, but honestly, it felt like after the first two turns, the game was already over because Metagross just kind of sweeps through me. So, I needed to play better towards a potential late game Metagross sweep, which involves then using Torkoal and Dusclops most likely to try to stall it out. Venusaur didn't feel like it would have been very good into that. So, yeah. But, really interesting set of games. So, thank you as always for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll catch you all next time. All right. Peace.